Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. Now, today is going to be our very first of our new series of what I like to call, Let's Bake a Pie. So, no, I'm not going to run out there and grab a chef's hat and, and start throwing down in the oven out here like Julia Child. That's not what we're doing. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to be working with my favorite computer projects, and we'll show you that here in just a second. Stay with us. Okay, folks, so everybody knows what a Raspberry Pi is. I'm sure that a lot of you guys have seen these out there. Uh, they are fantastic little computers with thousands of projects you can actually do with them. Now, I'm going to give you an example. I've got one right here for you. And this is the Raspberry that we're actually going to be using uh, for our very first Bake a Pie session. I'm going to show it over here to the computer. And Stumpy's taking a peek at it here. All right, so we're going to crack this open and get, you, get a little closer look at what we're dealing with. Now... This is the Raspberry Pi B3 Plus. Now, the B3 Pluses have got a 1.4 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, built on Wi-Fi and 5G. They've also got Bluetooth built into them, a LAN card, and four USB 2.0s. Um, now, I've heard in the future, they will probably have USB 3.1 uh, be upgrading the processor and the RAM on board. But for our current project and what we're doing, this is perfect for what we're looking for. The video output on him, as you can see, is actually coming out HDMI. And you've got one audio port as well. This is your 5 volt charging port. And these are your I.O. pins. Now, you also have the ability through these extra ports to add on uh, extra peripherals, like uh, a touch screen or little LCD screens or even a camera, which we, uh, we will probably be doing another video on that here shortly. I have a surprise coming for you guys. So. This is what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be working with, this Raspberry Pi. Uh, you might be wondering, what are we going to bake this pie into this time? Well, we're going to bake this into something that I have a, a, a true personal love for, a, a computer system that I grew up with. You've seen it once on our unboxing, but we're going to bring her back out. We are going to bake this pie into this Commodore VIC-20. Now... The way we're going to do this is a little bit different than a lot of the conversions you've seen on this. Um, we are actually going to do a complete stripped down conversion. So the, the old motherboard um, and all of the internal components will come out. We will maintain the keyboard and all of the internal wiring. Reason being, because when we uh, have this plugged in, number one, we want the LED to work. We want the power switch to work on the side. The couple of differences or changes we're going to make is most of the conversions for these um, will have one USB port that's coming out. You have one USB internally that's going to be working the keyboard, the internal keyboard. But you always need external ports um, to add on another kind of keyboard. And just to kind of give you a tip of why that's necessary, um, the Commodore keyboard, while it's very, very cool, the problem is that it's missing a lot of the keys that contemporary keyboards have. Um, so while you could probably browse the net and muddle your way through this, uh, it's a lot easier if you need to do things that are outside of what was specifically designed for Commodore. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to plug in an external keyboard. Not to mention a lot of games require an external mouse, so we'll have a USB port available for that as well. So we are going to have two external USB ports and one of the other USBs will be controlling the internal components. So in order to complete this conversion, we're going to need the Commodore itself, we're going to need one Raspberry Pi. Now, you don't have to necessarily use the B3 Plus for this conversion. I've seen it done with the regular B. I've even seen it done with some of the twos. Um, but this is the most powerful one available yet. And for what I want to do, this is definitely going to be uh, the way to go on it. So this is not only going to be running an emulation for every Commodore game ever made. Uh, it should run everything from the Amiga, uh, the 64, the VIC-20, uh, all of them. I want to get all of them on this one system. And that's all it's going to do. It's going to be dedicated to Commodore. So I figure if I've got to kill my VIC-20, I want to kill it in a way that uh, kind of shows it off a little bit. So we'll stay with that. All right. We're going to need a couple other components. Now, a lot of this is actually 3D printed. And there are models out there on the Internet that you can use for these. Um, but as you can see, you've got an I.O. shield. This is a mounting plate for inside the computer to mount the Raspberry 2. As you can see, they, the holes do mount up, so it's designed for it. All right. You're also going to have spacers. These are to block off unneeded ports, and I'll give you an idea what that is. As you can see, it'll block off the unneeded ports internally. 
All right, because you don't want any big gaping holes on your project when you're done. These are also going to be for your outputs. Now, in the back of the Commodore, you had your video outputs and you had your, key, your joystick ports. This will block off all of the ports and leave one open uh, if you're going to run either an external power source, a camera, uh, uh, anything like that. That's, that's what these are going to do. And I will be cutting these down to basically whatever we're going to end up fitting into these, including one other thing that we'll talk about here in just a second. You're also going to need an item called a Kira. Now, what this does is, actually, there's one company in the world that actually manufactures these. I will put a link down in the description below here. Um, what this actually does is it takes the internal ports and it maps them over to the I.O. of the Raspberry. Therefore, that way you can also get these serial ports. So you can use a standard serial port joystick if you wanted to, or a USB joystick. Now, the other cool thing this will do is, number one, it's going to give you a power switch, an external power switch to turn this on and off. And it's going to give you an external USB port. Now, this could be used for an external keyboard if you want to, or any other external peripheral device. That, that is one of the nice things about having this. It is also going to give you the ability, using the I.O. ports on the Kira, to connect to the existing keyboard. You have to have this in order to connect this keyboard to the Raspberry. So this is an absolutely necessary piece of equipment right there. We're also going to need, this is the HDMI. Now what this will do is take the HDMI from the, straight from the uh, Raspberry Pi and it wires it to an external female connector that will connect onto one of the, the pre-printed ports that we've got out here so that you can plug a monitor in externally through the back. Now this is one of the things that we also like to do. Now you'll notice that on this one I cut out two ports in this hole. Now those two ports are for the USBs. So these USB cables will actually be connected into the Raspberry and then run out to the external female ports you see here so that you can plug in devices to directly into the USB ports. So now you'll have access to all four of your ports. One of the internal ports will be going to the Kira and these two will be going to the external and you'll be using one for the keyboard. So you'll have access to all of the ports on there. You will also need now, this is a USB, which is actually going to come off of your uh, uh, Raspberry and connect over to the I.O. ports of your Kira. So that's all this is, is some pinout jumpers for that. And it will have to be soldered. And for that, we actually have some standard pins. It'll have to be soldered to, if you look on the Kira, there are four USB solder points right there. Hopefully, Stumpy is picking this up. So these pins will come through here and solder to here, and that will be, give you the USB connection to both the internal and the external ports on the Kira. Okay, so you have to have some pins for that, so we've got those. Now this is a power block, is what it's called. There is actually a company that manufactures these. I will also put a link down in there. It is called a power block. This will sit on top of the Kira, and what it will do is it will allow you to connect five volts here from your... Uh, um, Raspberry Pi into the power block to allow the switch externally to turn the Raspberry on and off. Now, this is also very necessary. You don't want to have to constantly plug and unplug your Raspberry. Um, there are a lot of solutions out there that let you hit a switch, a uh, toggle switch, or a momentary power switch um, to turn your Raspberry on and off. And, and certainly when it's mounted in here, you don't want to have to be pulling out cables and all that. So that's what this does. It eliminates that and allows you to use the power switch instead of having to manually plug this in. Now, the last part we're going to be using, now this is optional. Um, for those of you who don't know, and I'm going to turn this around, I just realized Stumpy had her backwards there. All right, for those of you who don't know, um, the hard drive, hard drive on a Raspberry is actually an SD card. Now, on the back here, you've got the SD card slot right here. Now, there are a lot of different images that you can make for this. Um, RetroPie is one of the biggest ones out there. Uh, turns it into essentially a gaming system. Now, we will probably be using a version of RetroPie on here. However, 
There are other versions. There's a version called Raspbian, which is actually, it's almost like Windows. It actually has a very nice GUI, a graphic user interface, uh, with a browser, uh, internet connection, the whole nine yards, just like Windows, um, that has the ability to turn any TV into a smart TV. If you've got an HDMI port, you can browse the internet, Netflix, all that good stuff. Um, there's also versions of Windows IoT, which kind of looks like a stripped down version of Windows 10 that will also run on the Raspberry. So you have the ability to interchange these and, and change it. However, with the default conversion of this Commodore, um, if you've got the SD card mounted in the Raspberry, you would have to literally open up this case every single time you wanted to switch between them. So what this cable does is, this plugs into the Raspberry, into the port in the back, and on the other end, you've got a female receptacle. This allows you to change the operating system on this at will. You literally pull out the, the SD card with the operating system you have, put the new SD card in, boot up the Raspberry, and you are on the new version. So this is something that I personally had to have. Now, routing this is going to be a little fun. I, I have a couple ideas of what we're going to do. Um, odds are it's going to end up coming out of one of these ports, and it's going to be stuck to the side like that. So, as you can see, that'll be nice and clean. It'll go up in there. You won't even see a cable. But that'll give us the ability just to snap in an SD card right there and fire up the system with a new operating system. So, that is going to be our project. Now, this is, uh, it's not a, an overly complicated project, but it is, it is a longer one. Uh, it takes a lot of attention to detail. Uh, I suspect I'm going to be doing a lot of modification of the 3D printed parts in order to accommodate what I wanted to do here. But... Little time, little elbow grease, it'll definitely be worth it. And this will be running nothing but Commodore games. It's got the ability to run everything else, but it's only going to run Commodore games. So it'll be very cool. Yeah, to see it from the front, you wouldn't even know it wasn't a regular Commodore VIC-20 until you boot it up. That's when the uh, magic happens. So this is part one. We will be coming back with you uh, with, some, with the build parts of this video. Uh, very soon. It's going to take me a couple days to get all my stuff together. I've got a few other videos in the works for you guys. Um, one of them in particular I know you're very, very much going to like, uh, and some parts coming in for that one as well. So we're going to go ahead and knock out part one now, uh, close this video out, and I should have the, uh, uh, the second part of this up for you within a week or so. Uh, with all the build, the procedure we did, as well as the testing, and we'll fire it up and maybe even play a few games. So Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down there. It really helps me out a lot. And I'll tell you folks, I uh, was completing this video, kind of getting cleaned up and wrapped up here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. You know, you, you get kind of a rush of emotion that comes over you when you see your, uh, your first computer. You know, have you ever had like a sound or a smell trigger some kind of memories? And, well, that's what this really does for me. I, uh, my first Commodore VIC-20 I got when I was 10, and uh, fresh hot off the shelf. Just before that, the year before, my dad had bought me an Atari 2600. So you can imagine the step up, the, the, the change going to this VIC-20. Um, you know, I'll tell you, when I first got it, of course, I had no disk drive. I, I had uh, uh, no tape drive. I had the Commodore the power supply, and the book. That's what I had. And I spent the next three months just typing in the little test programs that came in that book, uh, learning how to, you know, not learning how to program in basic, uh, changing things around to see what it would do, uh, trial and error kind of things. Um, it, it really was it, was, it was a defining characteristic for me. It was a defining time in my life. Believe it or not, this computer was what made me decide to get into IT. It really set my path, my entire career, all of my goals were based around starting on this computer. And then, of course, a couple of years later, I got my first Commodore 64. The rest, as they say, is history. It was just stairs, 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 right on up. But this was the one that started it all for me. So I look forward to doing this conversion for you guys. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It, it's going to look beautiful. I will tell you, and this is for one of my favorite YouTubers out there. It's a... a, a YouTuber named the 8-Bit Guy. Um, I've never met him. I've watched all of his videos. He's a great guy. At least he seems to be on his videos. Um, it, it does break my heart a little bit to take this apart because it, it's in such good shape. 
Uh, and I happen to know that he also sells refurbished Commodore VIC-20 boards. So in theory, I could bring this one back to life. But for this project, I want to go ahead and uh, I want to get this done. I want to make this sing and play like it always did. And then we'll, uh, we'll come back in a later video and perhaps do a restoration on a VIC-20 the way he does them. You know, maybe I'll find one that's all torn down or something like that, and we'll, uh, we'll build it back up again. Because as a lot of you remember in this box, I do have a lot of the original cartridges as well as the power supply and uh, um, all the RF cabling and all that kind of stuff. So we've got all the cabling for it. Um, that'll be a project for the future. So thanks again, guys, for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, hit that like and subscribe. It helps me out. keeps me going. Uh, you can also come down here and see me at the Cattle Barn Flea Market. I do have a booth here. I'm open every single weekend. I'm doing repairs on people's computers. I'm doing upgrades and custom builds. And if you just want to come down and take a ride on one of my three VR systems, we got three of them running at my booth. So come down and see us. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. We'll see you guys next time.